Did the government deliberately lowball the price tag? Is it a case of different accounting? Is the national defense holding back critical details needed just for the basic public transparency around the cost of the mission? By the way, the kind of transparency that citizens in the U.S. get on a regular basis. Joining me now in the foyer, James Bazin, the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of National Defense. Hélène Lavalgère is the NDP deputy foreign affairs critic. And Joyce Murray is the liberal defense critic. All of you, good to see you here. Mr. Bazan, um, was DND instructed not to cooperate with the parliamentary budget officer in providing what they believe are basic information about the mission? Uh, not at all. Evan, we said right from the start that we're going to be open, transparent, and accountable, uh, and we are doing that. Uh, we are tabling estimates on Thursday. Mr. Kenny announced that that's going to be $122 million. That's the hard number. We know what it is costing us now that we've uh, set operational tempo. Uh, we knew the, the biggest cost was in the deployment of troops and equipment. And uh, so now all that has been able to be accounted for and it's there. And it, it's there to support our Canadian Armed Forces and making sure that they have the resources, the equipment, and, and are paid well for the job that we've tasked them right. to do in fighting this ISIL t uh, genocide that's taken place throughout Iraq. And of course, we know that ISIL has declared war on us here in Canada. Okay, but l let me focus on disclosure. And I'm going to show our viewers this interview I did with the Assistant Parliamentary Budget Officer, Mustafa Askari. But I spoke to him in detail. The PBO says they couldn't get information about the composition and characteristics of personnel, the amount of ammunition used, the amount of flying hours for various air assets. In fact, they said said basic information that was not remotely cabinet confidence. Their definition, by the way, if it's, it shows up in another document that's not cabinet confident, it should be in the public. And I said, is it getting worse or is it getting better in terms of transparency and getting information about the mission? Here's what he told me. This one was particularly bad uh, relative to the previous uh, uh, issues that we had with the Department of National Defense. I think we got some information for F-35, we got some information for joint support ships uh, projects, and, but this one was particularly bad. So it's getting worse? It's getting worse. What's the government's response? The parliamentary budget officer says it's getting worse. They're getting less information than before, not more. As uh, Mr. Kenny has said, as uh, we've talked about before, that we're not going to disclose things that might impact operational security or would be in violation of cabinet secrecy. So uh, those things are, are still uh, secret, but I can tell you that in the $122 million that we have tabled, uh, or will be tabling on Thursday in the House of Commons, we'll provide uh, the, the, the numbers as it applies to Operation Impact without going into the details that are going to compromise the operations clear, of our Canadian Armed Forces in Iraq. They're saying not, but I, I just I want to be clear on this. The government keeps saying it's cabinet confidence, we can't disclose. In fact, originally I remember, and you remember, when the last Defence Minister Nicholson was there, he said we'll disclose it at the end of the mission. Yesterday, suddenly, the department decided to release the $122 million with no context, mind you, the day before the P PBO's number. Again, why does the PBO say this is not cabinet confident, it is not jeopardized security, and by the way, they also say you're violating parliamentary law. You have to release it to them. Why the lack of disclosure? We're doing full disclosure, as you're going to see when we table on, on Thursday, and, and it's actual FAW uh, numbers. It's not uh, making assumptions. It's not crystal balling. These are the actual numbers that's going to be required to take us through to the end of March 31st. Uh, we said we'd report back in normal parliamentary process, and that's what we're doing. And now that we know what we're going to be tabling on Thursday, immediately Minister Kenny mm -hmm. released that data. All right, let me get Ellen Lavalgeau. By the way, uh, I know your, your, your party has accused them of not disclosing. You know, I, and Terry Molesky just pointed out, the numbers aren't that far off in terms of the difference. What's, what's your view of the cost estimates? Well, the numbers are not that far off, but the, the PBO says that there's elements that he couldn't include in his analysis just because he didn't get the information from the Department of National Defense. So it's very difficult for the PBO to work under those circumstances. And I, 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 I really don't understand when I hear talking about full disclosure. We've asked for those numbers for months now. In, in the U.S., you know, people have asked access government respect its citizen and provide them with the information but, the, but the, to be fair 
the low number of the PBO is only six million dollars off the government's number. So why don't you trust the government's numbers and wait till they table the estimates on Thursday? Well, I, from past experience, I would tend to see that the PBO has his, its, his finger more on the on the dot, on the real number, uh, usually than the government. And what we must remember also is the PBO underlines that you know the final cost in Libya was six times the cost of of the uh, of the, the first estimates or the supplementary so, so. cost. But uh, the, the truth is that the difference the difference between the minimum uh, of the PBO and what the government says is not that huge. Right, between the maximum, uh, and, and also because there are elements that the PBO couldn't include George, in its okay. analysis. Uh, I, I want to get to George Moore, but I want to just be fair to everyone here on the Libyan cost of the mission. Peter McKay originally said it was $50 million. He was talking about the incremental cost. It turned out to be $100 million. You're saying eventually the full cost was $350 million. I just want to be fair to everyone. Incremental costs, which is what the parliamentary budget officer and Jason Kenney both have revealed, those are the costs above and beyond whatever costs would have been spent usually. So we're measuring in, uh, incremental costs, not incremental the full cost, just so we don't do apples and oranges. But Joyce Murray, when you talk about this, this the difference, it's not a huge difference. What, do the Liberals have a problem with this? I think, yes, I do have a problem with the process, uh, especially, Evan. Um, this is uh, a government that has refused to provide cost estimates, unlike the United because States. Because we want to be on actual costs. And unlike cost. the uh, Australia, whose governments provided detailed cost estimates through Parliament to the public. So what is this? What, is, what are the Conservatives hiding here? Nothing. And secondly, uh, the uh, opposition members had to go to the public the, the parliamentary budget officer whose very purpose is to dig through detailed uh, cost information and help us be able to let the public know how their tax, their, uh, tax dollars are being spent. And, and I'll quote from his report, uh, he said that every single request for detailed data was refused. So what, uh, that may well be against the law. What is the government, why is the government deceiving the public by saying they're being transparent when in fact they're stonewalling parliamentarians, they're stonewalling the officer of parliament whose job it is to put this okay. information forward. So, so let's get Mr. Bazan. Mr. Bazan, part of this, the PBO says they couldn't get information. The Department of Defense sent us a statement responding to the PBO saying, quote, the Department of National Defense has and will continue to provide the PBO with information that he needs to do his true. job within the mandate Parliament has given him. As per our correspondence with the PBO, December 23rd, 14, some of the information requested was deemed to be a cabinet confidence and could not be released at that time. The problem, sir, is that the, the parliamentary budget officer uh, doesn't believe that what's being called cabinet confidence those estimates are not cabinet yeah. confidence at all. They don't qualify as that, that. That term is being misused to hide the cost. What do yeah. you say to that? It's not being used to hide the cost because we, we're reporting the cost. And we want to report actual costs, so we said right from the start. You already made the example on Libya that, that, that the estimate didn't match up to the actual cost. So that's why we wanted to make sure that what we're putting out there are the actual facts. We didn't know when we were going into this, especially back in December, what operational tempo was going to be. We, we had some weeks that, that uh, we had hardly any sorties going out. And we can actually, you know, we know that the most expensive part of Operation Impact is the, the flights and, and, the, and the cost of munitions. So why and not so, just so give that stuff sure to the you PBO. have the actual cost. Well, at, at that time, we were still in, in the estimate process, and, and, and how do you, you base anything on fact? And so, so even for, for the PBO to come up with any numbers, uh, he, he was, again, is, is making extrapolations, and we want to be working on facts, and we want to make sure that, that, you know, cabinet secrets and confidences and operational security are not compromised in any way, shape, or form. Okay, well, the, P, the PBO wanted, want they, they believe those are facts. I got you all for a minute, and I got to get to this. I want to shift today to reports that Hezbollah, the leader in Lebanon, Hassan Nasrallah, is calling on all Mideast countries to join the fight against ISIS. Mr. Bazan, uh, Canada considers them a terrorist organization. They are funded by Iran. Your government's been very outspoken about this. But now they say they want to fight ISIS. Is this the case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend? They're definitely not our friends. Uh, Hezbollah and the Iranian regime, for that matter, uh, are enemies. Uh 
to Israel. They have been uh, destabilizing the Middle East for years. They've been supporting the Assad regime and the genocide that he's committed in Syria. So there's no way that uh, we're going to be working alongside any of these or organizations. They are a terrorist organization, and you know they see ISIL as a threat. Well, they're, they're going to deal with that in their own own way, I guess. But you know we're going to continue to focus on uh, working with the, uh, the Kurdish Peshmerga and the Iraqi security forces uh, to take on this ISIL threat and make sure that that genocide does not spread uh, and that we can stop it and make sure that it's not a threat to our own security here in Canada. So this is, the, uh, and let me, let me go to Alain Lavergera and Joyce Murray. I mean, this is kind of interesting because you've got Iran who wants to fight ISIS and might get more active, and now you've got Hezbollah, uh, a deemed terrorist organization that want to do that. How do you respond to that kind of thing, Alain Lavergera? Well, we see how complicated is the situation, and in fact, what it reminds me is, is, is the fact that, uh, you know, the government said that they wouldn't go into Syria. There, there were a lot of questions about whether they would ask the, the, uh, the authorities in Syria to intervene there. So it makes for kind of strange bedfellows, and I think it, it, it speaks to the complexity of the situation. Okay, but what do you do about it? Um, so well, I let that out. I mean, just, just I mean, I know. I mean, saying this, the Middle East is complicated. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I, I don't know how far that gets you. Yes. Okay. We all agree. What do you do about it? Well, uh, first you thread carefully, and that's what we've been saying all along about this mission, that you don't just jump in kind of, we're, we're and, and, and you have to thread carefully and in a transparent manner. Uh, regarding Hezbollah, I, I mean, of course, it's, uh, I don't think you want to go there, but we've seen Jordan reacting, and we've seen... Um, Egypt reacting to, and uh, so basically. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to go to Joyce Murray, but I, I'm not 100 percent sure I, I could discern a position there. Joyce Murray, what do you do about Hezbollah or Iran if they want to join the fight against ISIS? Well, we have to be very careful how we support the coalition and uh, careful that equipment doesn't fall into the wrong hands, uh, Evan. Yeah. I think that this really falls, this, uh, this really um, highlights the importance of being able to trust uh, Canada's leadership uh, around this mission, and we simply haven't had the, uh, we haven't had the transparency, we haven't had the forthright answers, not on the character of the mission with the special forces that were promised to be behind the wire. Apparently there was a change in the mission. We went through all that a few weeks ago, and we simply cannot trust to have an open and forthright conversation with They've got to remember, Evan, that the NDP costs, and the Liberals are opposed to us being on, there and saving on, innocent lives and, and making as, sure that the security yeah, threat doesn't come to our as, shores. as uh, our parliamentary secretary, uh, secretary knows, the Liberals supported that Canada be part of the coalition. <laughs> yeah. On October 2nd, five days before the motion the was passed, they, 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 they're making it we up as they go along here. We had different opinions about how Canada can best yeah, contribute. Dropping blankets, uh, that's what they going, uh, Okay, I can't hear you all. I, I know the Liberals, we, we've had this battle before. Yes, you voted for the original idea to send uh, people originally, but when the motion came, Actually, the Liberals did not support it. Not at uh, all. All right, uh, but they did support the early one, just to be fair. All right, James oh, Bazan, Alain Lavergere, and Joyce Murray. No, I'm just, listen, I'm just stating the facts, how, how they rolled out. You guys can make the politics up. Well, we'll talk about that another time, Evan, but, you know, Justin Trudeau never even mentioned it until October 2nd when we're already dealing with the, uh, with the motion in the House. All right, and, I, I got to leave it there. And Don't the worry, we'll have lots more time to come to this. I want to thank all of you for coming on. <laughs>